first here, Taco Tokens. Chipotle adds crypto payments via Flexa. Mexican fast food chain Chipotle is now accepting cryptocurrency payments through digital payment provider Flexa at all of its over 2,950 United States-based restaurants. Flexa announced the partnership on June 1st, which will see Chipotle accept all the 98 cryptocurrencies Flexa currently supports. This includes Bitcoin, Ethereum, and seven US dollar peg stablecoins, including USDC coin. Flexa, a Bitcoin transaction enablement company, uh, has partnered with fast food giant, as well as other large businesses, such as cinema operator Regal Theaters and Banco Agricola, El Salvador's largest financial in institution. This partnership allows Flexa to enable retail and merchant Bitcoin transactions for the bank's customers. Here they have a tweet out about that partnership. Chipotle has been interested in cryptocurrencies for some time now and has even experimented with giving them away as prizes. In April 2021, to celebrate National Burrito Day, Chipotle gave away $100,000 worth of Bitcoin along with free burritos. This made Chipotle the first U.S. restaurant brand to offer a crypto giveaway. The game mocked Thomas' experience of losing over 7,000 BTC due to forgetting the password for his crypto wallet, which today would be worth over $208 million. Other fast food brands have looked into or shown interest in using crypto and metaverse applications for their names. In November 2021, Burger King partnered with the Robinhood trading platform and gave away free Dogecoin, BTC, and ETH with meal purchases. McDonald's has filed multiple trademark applications that suggest the company is interested in exploring the potential of virtual reality and the metaverse. This includes plans for a virtual restaurant that would offer both real and virtual goods, as well as home delivery. McDonald's has a history of poking fun at crypto Twitter, so this move could be another way to generate some good PR. Despite market turbulence, the desire for crypto adoption among merchants in the U.S. remains high. This has led to an increase in the implementation of payment solutions to capture the growing interest in this area. A Crypto.com global survey of merchants released in February showed that only 4% were already accepting cryptocurrency payments, but nearly 60% of merchants responded with an interest in accepting crypto payments within the next year. That is pretty cool. Um, so if you like to eat at these restaurants, uh, Flexa, I'm not familiar with that. Maybe something to look into getting if you're wanting to utilize crypto to pay for your Chipotle. Um, I think it's smart that they are uh, adopting this for sure. Up next here, reliably unreliable, Solana price dives after latest network outage. This year has been tough for the Solana network, suffering full or partial outages at least seven times in the last 12 months. The Solana blockchain was knocked offline again on Wednesday afternoon, causing a four and a half hour interruption in block production. This latest outage was caused by a bug and validator operators were able to restart the mainnet at around 9 p.m. UTC. Anatoly Yakovenko, co-founder of Solana Labs, explained the cause of the network disruption in a tweet. A durable nonce instruction caused some nodes to believe the block was invalid, resulting in a lack of consensus. The durable transaction nonce feature in Solana is designed to address the short lifetime of a transaction block hash. However, a bug in this feature caused nodes to generate different outputs, resulting in consensus failure and the latest period of downtime. The network was restarted with this feature disabled. Yakovenko said they are working on a fix and it will be released soon. Sold prices have fallen sharply over the past 12 hours, dropping below $40 according to CoinGecko. This represents a decrease of over 14% and takes the token's value down to 85% of its all-time high from November 2021. If this trend continues, Sol could soon slip out of the top 10 largest cryptocurrencies by market capitalization. Since September 2021, Solana has suffered from at least seven different outages, according to Network Uptime Tracker. This is in part due to the two denial of service attack related outages in the same month. As a result, Solana has often been dubbed an Ethereum killer. The blockchain experienced a number of problems in January, including service disruptions and degraded performance for nine days out of the month. Duplicate transactions were to blame for the second outage in January. In late April and early May, Solana was down again for almost eight hours due to non-fungible token minting bots overwhelming the network. According to the Solana status page, the blockchain clock is running behind real-world time by 30 minutes. The page notes that block times have been longer than normal, causing the on-chain time to fall behind. So 
some things to note if you are invested in Solana. It's always good to know what's going on with the currencies that you're invested in. So it kind of determines if you want to buy, sell, what you want to do with your position within the project. Up next here, 11% of US insurers invest or are interested in investing in crypto. Survey results from Goldman Sachs indicate that insurance firms based in the United States are most interested in investing in cryptocurrency. The survey polled 328 chief financial and chief investment officers from around the globe to gauge asset allocations and portfolios. The investment banking giant recently released its annual global insurance investment survey, which included responses regarding cryptocurrencies for the first time. The survey found that 11% of U.S. insurance firms indicated either an interest in investment investing or a current investment in, in crypto. Pretty interesting. Seems like such a low number of people like that are already invested or are wanting to invest, but that just shows that there's so much more room for growth. On Tuesday's Goldman Sachs exchanges at Goldman Sachs podcast, global head of insurance asset management, Mike Siegel, said he was surprised to get any results from a survey on crypto. He noted that while 6% of industry respondents indicated they are either invested in crypto or considering investing in crypto, this was higher than he anticipated. Other regions insurers were next in line with 6% interested or currently invested and European insurers came in at only 1%. Insurers expect cryptocurrencies to deliver the highest returns of any asset class over the next 12 months, with 6% ranking it as their first choice. This beats out United States and European equities. 2% of firms reported current crypto investments with Goldman Sachs analysts writing that this level of interest is significant despite the small number of firms involved. On the podcast, Siegel discussed a survey that was conducted to understand the motivation behind crypto purchases from interested firms. The results showed that companies are interested in crypto so that they can understand the market and the infrastructure. If crypto becomes a currency that can be used in transactions, these companies want to be able to use it to denominate policies and also accept premium payments. 1% of surveyed firms said they would increase their crypto position over the next 12 months, 7% said they would maintain their current position, and 92% said they would not invest in crypto over the next year. Despite growing interest in cryptocurrency, 16% of respondents still ranked it as the asset class they expected to deliver the lowest returns over the next 12 months. Overall, cryptocurrency ranked as the third lowest asset class on this measure. In the report, Matthew McDermott, the bank's global head of digital assets, wrote that as the crypto market matures and regulatory certainty grows, more and more institutions are becoming interested in exploring investment opportunities and recognizing the blockchain technology underlying it. He said he was surprised by the rising adoption by global asset managers. Uh, I definitely think this is just a growing industry and it's going to continue to grow. It's going to continue to be adopted mainstream, especially as regulations come. Um, as it's more and more regulated, I think that's gonna give more people and institutions the courage to get into it because it kind of protects them a bit, um, but we'll see. Up next here, US Energy Company opens crypto mining facility in Middle East to use stranded natural gas. As the debate over the ethical implications of using fossil fuels in cryptocurrency mining continues to be a key issue for the industry, an unlikely partnership between a Denver-based mining company and the government of a gas-rich Middle Eastern country could pave the way for crypto to pay a role in reducing fossil fuel waste. On Wednesday, June 1st, Bloomberg reported that Crusoe Energy, an operator proposing wasted fuel energy to the computational power of crypto mining, would start its work in Omen. Omen exports 21% of its gas production and seeks to zero gas flaring by 2030. The American company Crusoe Energy Systems Inc. will be opening an office in Muscat, the capital of Omen. The company plans to install its equipment for capturing gas waste at well sites. It has already held a workshop with the country's largest energy producers, OQSAOC and Petroleum Development OMEN. The first pilot project is expected to be launched by the end of this year or early 2023. OMEN is interested in partnering with Algeria, Iraq, Libya, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia in order to reduce the amount of gas that is flared off during extraction. 
Gas flaring is a process of burning off the excessive flammable gas that is produ produced during extraction. According to the UN's Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia, Oman flared 10% of all the gas it consumed in 2018. The Arab region, of which Oman is a part, accounts for 38% of global flaring. Locke Miller emphasizes his company's mission to set a presence in the Middle East and Northern Africa to help local governments in their fight with flaring. He explains that having the buy-in from nations that are actively trying to solve the flaring issues is key to their success. In March, it was reported that ExxonMobil had partnered with Crusoe to run a Bitcoin mining pilot project at the Back and Shale Basin in North Dakota. However, neither company has confirmed this information. So um, that seems like a pretty cool concept. It sounds like they're using the extra gas or the gas that would be flared uh, to run the mining, the Bitcoin mining or the crypto mining um, computers or, you know, run that facility. So I think it's kind of cool trying to eliminate waste. Uh, and up next here, community fires back at anti-crypto letters sent to U.S. lawmakers. The crypto community has recently come under fire from anti-crypto individuals in the tech space who have accused them of lobbying regulators to influence them in favor of blockchain technology. In response, the crypto community has criticized the move and laid out counter arguments against the contents of the letter. Cryptocurrencies are risky, flawed, and unproven digital financial instruments, according to a letter signed by 26 tech personalities and sent to United States lawmakers. The letter expressed disagreements about the potential of blockchain technology and has urged the regulators to create harsher regulations for cryptocurrencies. The crypto community was quick to react to the letter, with many expressing their disagreements with its contents. Tech lawyer Preston Byrne also weighed in on the issue, dissecting the letter and providing counter-arguments to the claims made by its signatories in a blog post. Some members of the crypto community believe that regulatory clarity is more important than a safe haven from regulation. However, not everyone agrees with this stance. I think this is going to be part of the problem. So many people back and forth, even within the crypto community, how they want to regulate this. So it's just going to, it's just going to be very hard. Meltem Demirers, the chief strategy officer at CoinShares, also criticized the signatories of Burns' letter mentioning that they are known to be anti-crypto trolls. <clears throat> Philosophy professor Bradley Rettler also weighed in on the tech bros letter and a Twitter thread, Rettler pointed out that the letter failed to provide any supporting evidence to its claims. In a tweet, Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, said that Cory Doctorow being a signatory to the letter is upsetting and confusing a lot of crypto advocates. Buterin noted that many community members have looked up to Dr. O's vision and related as fellow travelers. Meanwhile, crypto lobbying organizations are seeing an increase in spending. According to data from February, crypto lobbying expenditure has increased by 116% on an annual basis, totaling $9.5 million over the past five years. The report showed that Ripple Labs has topped the chart of biggest spenders for lobbying in the United States. Not surprising as they have faced fire from the SEC, you know, trying to make sure that crypto is well advocated for. Obviously, they wouldn't be getting in into all this lawsuit and spending millions of dollars if not. And last but not least here, Coinbase Chief Legal Officer responds to SEC disclosure FUD. As fears surrounding the Coinbase exchange continue, Paul Gruel, the chief legal officer of Coinbase, has assured customers that their funds are safe within the exchange. In an SEC disclosure made by Coinbase back in May, it was mentioned that in the event of bankruptcy, crypto assets held in custody on behalf of customers may be subject to bankruptcy proceedings and that customers may become unsecured creditors in the process. The Coinbase disclosure has been thrust into the spotlight after the company reported losses of $430 million in the first quarter of 2022, a 27% decrease in revenue compared to the previous year. The news has been trending negatively, coinciding with the drop in value of Coinbase's junk bonds. As rumors that the company may go bankrupt circulated on social media, Coinbase's chief legal officer clarified and explained the situation in a blog post published on Thursday. Gruel explained that the exchange protects customers' funds both legally and physically. He also noted that the firm updated its retail user agreement to extend bankruptcy protections of institutional clients 
to retail investors as well. Gruel clarified that the firm will only take specific directions from customers regarding their assets and will not use funds for lending or other activi activities without explicit permission. Additionally, the attorney also tweeted that the exchange is financially strong with over $6 billion in the bank, implying that it is not at risk of bankruptcy despite the present FUD. In May, Brian Armstrong, the co-founder and CEO of Coinbase, commented on the issue. He underscored that the firm has no risk of bankruptcy and simply added that the clause due and added the clause due to a new SEC requirement. He noted that there are strong legal protections for its users in any event. So I think that that is some good reassurance for anyone using uh, Coinbase. If you want to read through that, I'm sure it's available to you um, just to see what that um, protection looks like in the agreement. I think someone from their company was the one who said that though about their funds being at risk, if I'm not mistaken. So I think that was just someone who was talking and talking to the news and media outlets it shouldn't have been, it seems like. But that is all we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment on what you want to see in a future video, and we'll see you next time.